Despite the collapse of Tower 7 making architectural history as the first skyscraper to collapse because of fire, all the steel from the 47-storey skyscraper was taken away to be melted down. Some made its way into this new US Navy vessel. But it turns out one section of steel was kept. How it got to be in its present state was described by the New York Times as perhaps the deepest mystery uncovered in the investigation. There's parts where the entire half inch of the beam is, uh, is gone, entirely dissolved right through. And so something happened to cause the steel to really thin and in some places to disappear entirely. In New England, the claims of the mysterious melted steel from Tower 7 has been unraveled. It was found by fire protection engineer Professor Jonathan Bonnet in a salvage yard. It came from a much larger beam. This was the size of steel that they used in the construction of Tower 7. They didn't use this particular kind of steel in Towers 1 or Towers 2. So that's why we know its pedigree. It was a surprise uh, to me because it was so eroded and deformed and so um, we took it for analysis in the lab. Well, it was attacked by uh, what we determined was a liquid slag. When we did the analysis, we actually identified it as an, a, a, a liquid containing iron, sulfur, and oxygen. You can see what it does is it attacks the grain boundaries, and then this bit would eventually have fallen out, and it would continue the attack. Professor Sisson says it didn't melt. It eroded. The cause were those very hot fires in the debris after 9-11 that cooked the steel over weeks. The sulfur came from masses of gypsum wallboard that was pulverized and burnt in the fires. I don't find it very mysterious at all that if I have steel in this sort of a high temperature atmosphere that's rich in oxygen and sulfur, this would be the kind of result I would expect. The way official bodies have investigated Tower 7 at the World Trade Center makes some people think they're hiding something. The first inquiry into Tower 7 by FEMA said the building collapsed because intense fires had burned for hours, fed by thousands of gallons of diesel stored in the building. But it said this had only a low probability of occurrence and more work was needed. Critics point out that was six years ago. Shyam Sunder has studied the steel from the Twin Towers. He heads the Tower 7 investigation by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. We've been at this for a little over two years, and doing a, a two or two and a half year investigation is not at all unusual. Uh, that's the same kind of time frame that takes place when we do airplane uh, crash investigation. It takes a few years. With no steel from Tower 7 to study, Investigators have instead made four complex computer models, worked out to the finest detail. They're confident their approach will provide the answers. We're moving as fast as we can. It's a very complex problem. It requires a level of uh, fidelity in the modeling and rigor in the analysis that has never been done before. Through here, the red area is showing where we had observed structural damage. You see there's a little bit... Of they say the main reason for the collapse were normal office fires, not the diesel as first thought. You can see here we either have large sagging or buckling occurring in some of these floor beams, and these circles indicate the condition of the connections, where yellow is a partial failure and a pink is a full failure where the entire connection no longer is attached to the column. Other skyscrapers haven't fully collapsed before because of fire. But what happened on 9-11 was unique. Tower 7 was built over an electricity substation. There were many fires. And crucially, firefighters could not fight the fires in Tower 7. They didn't have enough water and focused on saving lives. Our working hypothesis now actually suggests that it was normal building fires that were build, spreading, growing and spreading throughout the multiple floors that may have caused the, the ultimate collapse of the buildings. Investigators have focused on the east side, where the long floor spans were under most stress. They think fires burnt long enough to weaken and break many of the connections that held the steel structure together. Most susceptible were the thinner floor beams, 
which required less fireproofing, and the connections between the beams and the columns. As they heated up, the connections failed, and the beams sagged and failed also. The combination of those two effects makes that column go unstable. When that happens, it leads then to a very large, unsupported column length. And there's hard physical evidence from another building at the World Trade Center, which helps explain how fire could have caused Tower 7 to collapse. Several of us went into Building 5, and as we walked along on the floor, we came to the edge of a concrete slab and looked out and were stunned because we saw a major collapse. We saw an interior section of the building that had collapsed simply due to fire. The steel was heated for hours, weakening it, and the connections sagged and failed. But what about the speed and neat symmetry of the collapse? The penthouse dropped, and then the entire uh, perimeter of the main building begins and goes straight down in six and a half seconds, which is virtually free fall speed. It turns out that when you have connections that essentially don't have strength, uh, for the loads that they are being subjected to uh, and you have this massive failure of a column, it does not take time. There's no, the structure has lost all integrity at that point in time. 